Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the worship at the First Congregational Church of Great Barrington, a UCC church. Uh, I'm not going to go over the announcements that are in your bulletin or in the emails that you receive. So uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this being Lady Sunday. Uh, as you know, the church is a partnership between clergy and laity. And today is the, the day that the UCC celebrates the contribution that laity makes. Um, laity kind of runs the church. The clergy is our spiritual advisor, uh, our leader, but it's laity who really runs the church, if you think about it. We've got the uh, uh, lay Leadership Council working in conjunction with the pastor, and Lay Leadership Council works in conjunction with admin board. So it's all made up of laity. Sundays, laity are an integral part of the service. Laity, we have laity greeters, laity who are our ushers, uh, our readers are laity. So we make up a large part of the service. Laity can also do more. Um, like today, Laity is going to run the whole service. Some of us have been trained in the past in lay speaking, and so I will be giving the message, but it is from a Laity's perspective, not from a theologian's perspective. So this day, we celebrate Laity, we up here all encourage you to become involved in the service in the future. It it's, can be very, very rewarding, and it gives you a chance to witness to your faith, not from a theological point of view, but from a life perspective. So, thank you for all being here this morning. If you would, let us join together in the call to worship. We have come together to worship our risen Lord. We live in Jesus Christ. Our lives are transformed and our spirits are renewed as we live in Jesus Christ. Please join me in prayer this morning. Dear Father, thank you for this Sunday. Lord, we come before you with hearts of gratitude. You have seen us through another week, and we stand at the threshold of a fresh week, full of new beginnings. Lord, help us start this new week with you. Stir in us a deep desire to come into further relationship with you. Remind us that it is not solely by going to Sunday service that we worship and come before you. Rather, it is through daily communion with you through relationship and prayer. Please help us worship you with undistracted hearts. You know how our minds wander to our upcoming week, present worries, and thoughts of others and other things. Help us put those thoughts away and focus on you and your glory. Highlight to us how we may be obedient to your call and heart. Embrace us with your love, O oh Lord, for we desperately desire to know you and to feel your love around us. Give us a hunger for your word and truth, O Lord. Help us prepare, prepare for our week ahead through contemplation and connection with you. Amen. I invite you to stand as able and turn to page one in the New Century Hymnal for our hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
morning is Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46 from the New Revised Standard Bible Version, which is the Red Hymn Bible in your pew. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accused, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This and this is the reading. Our second reading is from John 15, verses 1 through 8. And again, it's from the New Revised Standard Version. And this is Jesus, the true vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciple. A few, <coughs> excuse me. A few weeks ago, as I was driving to one of my many appointments to view houses in Connecticut, I passed by a small vineyard. There were several people working among the vines. It looked like some were harvesting the rich purple clusters, 
while others followed behind, possibly dressing the vines after the harvest in preparation for the coming winter. In some respects, this vine, vineyard reminds me of how important vineyards were to the people of Jerusalem in the days of Jesus. Back then, growing grapes was a very important industry. It was vital to the people because it provided food, drink, and economic benefits. Everyone knew about growing grapes, and so Jesus used this picture to instruct his disciples on their relationship to him and to God, the Heavenly Father. Let's look at this picture and see how we fit in. The question that I ask you this morning is, what kind of branch are you? The picture Jesus paints is a simple one. Jesus pictures himself as the main vine of the vineyard, and we are the branches that grow off of him. God, the Father, is the gardener. There are different branches in the vineyard. First, there is the throwaway branch. In reading from verse 2 in John today, we hear about God, the gardener, cutting off every branch that bears no fruit. Again, in verse 6, we hear that if anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers, is thrown into a pile and burned. When a gardener works in his vineyard, he sees branches that never bear fruit. He cuts them off and eventually burns them. Jesus is painting a picture of people here. There are those who at one time were Christians in their lives, but then something happened to them. They stopped producing fruits of faith. They stopped obeying God. They stopped living and talking in a Christian way. They stopped pr producing fruits of faith in their lives. Why does this happen to people? The answer is in verse 6. If anyone does not remain in me. Jesus tells us that anyone who does not continue contact with him through his word, through, his, through sacraments, then the person loses his faith and falls away. He stops bearing fruit. It becomes a throwaway branch. Too often, Christians break down in the middle of their lives. They stop producing fruits of faith. They start living like unbelievers. Why? It is so easy to neglect the things we need to keep our faith alive, and that is the Word and the Sacrament. We all know how difficult it is to keep our focus on our Christianity. There are many distractions, so many activities to choose from. There is work, raising a family, and the stress of current economics, and the curse of a worldwide pandemic that has kept us apart. The question for you this morning is what kind of branch are you? Are you producing fruit of faith in your life? Or have you broken down and become disconnected from the vine? How good is it that we can go to Christ, repent our sins, and receive His forgiveness? All we have to do is have an honest and contrite conversation with him. Through his word, Jesus tells us that we are forgiven. In verse 3, he says, You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. We are clean. We are forgiven. Because of the words Jesus has spoken to us, 
that he has lived and died and risen. That is how he cleanses us. But just because you are forgiven does not mean that God will give you an easy life. There is the second kind of branch, the pruned branch. We hear in verse 2, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it was given more fruitful. One of the jobs of the gardener is to prune the branches on the grapevine. He cuts off the dead ones, and these can be places for bugs or disease to grow. The gardener also cuts a lot of the living branches off the vine. He trims them way back, and by the time he is done, there does not seem to be much left of the grapevine. All this cutting seems to be so drastic, so extreme, so unnecessary. But the reason he does this is so that the branches reach their full potential. Even though the branch looks almost dead, months later they produce a very large crop, only because the gardener did all that cut. That is what God does to you. He prunes you. He cuts into your life and removes some things that you might not want removed. He takes things away from you. He changes things around you. And sometimes it seems so drastic, so extreme, and so unnecessary. When we are being pruned, we ask him, Why are you doing this to me, God? But God cuts into your life for your own good. He wants you to reach your full potential as a Christian. He wants you to produce as many fruits of faith as possible. Perhaps some of you are going through the pruning process right now. All of us experience this in our lives. While it happens, we must trust that God is in control because the gardener does know what he is doing. The goal is that each of us becomes a fruitful branch the third of the four branches we are looking at this morning. In verse 8, Jesus says, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The fruitful Christian is one that is filled with good works. These good works, first of all, include obedience to God, doing what God wants even when the rest of the world is doing something different. Good works include the way you treat other people, the people at home, your family, the people at work, your friends, even total strangers, especially strangers. When you are around these people, ask yourself, how can I serve them? How can I show the love of God to this person? How can I witness Jesus Christ to someone else? This is to my Father's glory, Jesus says, that you bear much fruit. In Hampton Court near London, there is a grapevine which is about a thousand years old. This grapevine has one root which is at least two feet thick and some of the main branches are 200 feet long. Despite its age, the vine produces several tons of grapes each year. Although some of the smaller branches are more than 200 feet from the main stem, they still bear the sweet and delicious fruit because they are connected to the vine. Life flows from that single root and throughout the vine, bringing nourishment and strength to each of the branches. 
All of us would like to be fruitful branches. But how does that happen? How can you become even more fruitful in your life? The answer is by staying connected to the vine. That is the fourth and final branch we are looking at this morning, the connected branch. Look at verse 4. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. No one can truly be a good person in the eyes of God unless he or she abides in Christ. In that verse alone, abide is repeated four times. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I, and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. A person who has regular contact with Jesus Christ will produce much fruit in his life. When you abide in him, he promises you that you will bear much fruit. There is only one way to maintain that connection with God, and you know the way. You are doing some of it right now by having regular contact with the Word and regular contact with the sacrament. God's Word and the Lord's Supper that some of you that's some of how you abide in Christ and how he abides in you. God places us in relationships with other believers. We need each other to grow effectively and be fruitful. None of us can make it alone. Being a part of a church and sharing loving relationship with other Christians is vital to our remaining in Christ. He instructs us in His Word. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. Through our personal devotions, sermons, teachings, and interactions in small groups, the Holy Spirit will cleanse and strengthen our lives to remain in Christ. Jesus tells you, apart from me, you can do nothing. He provides the nourishment the strength you need in your life to produce fruits of faith. How thankful we are that he has given us his word and his sacrament. Here we find that amazing message that you can sum up in three short sentences. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. So, what kind of branch are you? Really, if you think about it, we are all four. We repent of those times when we have been thrown away branches. We are thankful that Jesus has forgiven us. Although it, although it is painful, we are thankful that God prunes us. We are thankful that God produces fruits of faith in our lives. And we are thankful that Jesus abides in us and we in him through his word and sacrament. May God bless you as you ponder the picture of the vine, the branches, and the garden. Amen. Would you please join me in hymn number 99 from the uh, New Christian Hymnal? And it's Abide With Me.
Good morning. Today's pastoral prayer has been widely written about and widely available to most everyone who thinks of this topic. I've sampled quite liberally from those sources, and I'm grateful that they exist. Lord, we come here today in fellowship with one another, setting aside this time solely for you, to offer you praise and worship, to hear you speak to us, and to leave here shaped a little bit more into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So we come humbly and quietly before you praying today. Ever-present God, we thank you for these times this week where we smiled and laughed, those times of friendship and joy, of meals shared, those times when we appreciated the beauty of nature, when we felt a peace in our hearts, when we paused to be grateful for the life you have given us. For all of these and so much more, we know that we are blessed, and in gratitude and joy, we pray. For our days of difficulty and struggle, for the times when we have been less than our best, we give you thanks that you do not turn away from us and that we are never alone. The Bible tells us that you are gracious and just to forgive us and help us start anew. For this we pray and thank. Lord, may your words inspire us to act. We want to, be, to make a difference in the lives of others. The need for hope, acceptance, love, and compassion is great. We come together as a church to experience the inspiration, joy, and support of our fellowship. We work and pray together for the larger community. We are open and invite all to participate along with us. Lord, for those who are sick, suffering, lonely, misguided, or just in need of your presence, we ask that you would touch them with your healing, with your guidance, and with your peace. You have those on our prayer list, but hear us now as people in this congregation lift out loud the names of those for whom we ask your blessing. Now let us join the loud and together saying the Lord's Prayer found in, in today's service. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, for the confidence and joy and hope we have, we have because we walk daily with you, we give you thanks and praise in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And let all the people of God say, Amen. Our final hymn today is located on the blue insert in your bulletin. It's hymn number 593, Here I Am, Lord.
Now may our Lord Jesus, Christ himself, and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Go in peace and reflection. Amen.